tablets and computers, among other pets, so as to retain our teachers in the service. I believe this will go a long way in mitigating the effects of low morale amongst our teachers. I therefore urge you all to come up with reasonable recommendations, reasonable, I qualify, reasonable recommendations in your report for tabling in the August House. However, be mindful, be mindful of the fact that such recommendations must be, I must be cognizant of the social economic challenges facing our country currently. In that vein, I implore the teaching fraternity to negotiate for better conditions of service with government in good faith, in good faith, and not under the threat of industrial action. When that temptation to go on strike visits the teaching fraternity, the question must be asked as to whose rights must preponderate between the labor rights of the teachers and those of the child learner. Think about that. Whose rights must preponderate is it your rights, labor rights, or those of the child learner? Now, this applies to nurses and doctors as well. Whose rights? The right to life or the rights, the labor rights of the doctors and nurses and other health workers? That conundrum should be disentangled through the innermost conscience of the teaching vocation, the calling to impart knowledge to the learner religiously first and foremost. Let me remind you of the Ziramasanga Commission of Inquiry, which was sanctioned by the then President of the Republic of Zimbabwe, His Excellency the late Comrade Arajim Gabe, May his departed soul raise an eternal peace to diagnose the problems that were affecting the education factor, sector prior 1998. The Nzramasanga report, which was completed in 1999, was meant to usher in milestones 